This is where some of America's best restaurants get their steak. Pat LaFrieda Meat Purveyors supplies thousands of restaurants from New York to Las Vegas. It has the largest dry aging room in the world. One family has run this business for over a century, and Pat is the third generation owner. Right now there's well over $10 million of meat in here. He brought in a whole new approach to the business, selling high-end meat to both fancy restaurants, but also to burger chains like Shake Shack. Pat's team produces 250,000 pounds of meat every night. It's kind of like um, Jenga, where you're moving one piece and another piece comes in. It takes years to develop an army like we have. Their weapons, butcher's knives, band saws, and meat grinders. So how does Pat LaFrieda manage to supply everything from $3 smash burgers to $200 steaks? And how did he turn a humble butcher shop into a $270 million meat empire? Pat only buys prime and choice beef, the highest USDA grades. These cuts have the most marbling, which adds flavor. So how does all this pricey steak get to kitchens? Chefs normally know what they want to order or what they need to order after that dinner serving. And then they really want the product delivered the next morning, a few hours later. That's why shifts here start around 6 p.m. And then it's a race against the clock. Some kitchens need these steaks by the following morning. The only way to work through the night is, is to have cohesion. As a former, former military guy myself, you know, building that team, it takes time. Many steaks start in this dry aging room, which holds 15,000 of Pat's finest cuts. It has to stay at 36 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% humidity. Otherwise, everything will spoil or freeze and Pat could lose millions. As the meat ages, moisture evaporates and muscles break down. But we know that the dry aging process is working when we see that the protein has sunken in from the bone and the fat. Workers wheel the meat to the portioning section. Master butchers go to work on everything from tomahawk steaks to New York strips slicing them exactly the way each restaurant wants. Pat trained most of these butchers himself. The ones you made this morning were beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah, Pat. There really are no butcher schools. Our restaurants will ask me, Pat, where do you get your butchers from? I'm like, we don't get our butchers, we make our butchers. They only need a few tools to get the job done. In most people's hands, you're gonna see boning knives. With this, you can basically do the whole job um, until you get to cutting the steak across, and that's where you want a scimitar knife. And what makes this a butcher knife as opposed to a chef's knife? We have uh, a protective corner. But certain cuts require using a bandsaw. It's ideal for slicing through bone or doing high volume orders as fast as possible and only master butchers can operate them. It's probably a good two and a half years before they would even get to a bandsaw. Next, workers load everything onto trucks. If a customer is local, Pat's team can deliver within a few hours. The Press Club Grill in New York City gets thousands of pounds of meat from La Frida per week. Owner and chef Franklin Becker showed us how he prepares a boneless ribeye. Yeah, I try to season it fairly aggressively, okay, and uh, let all that salt kind of penetrate into the pores of the meat. And then I'm going on to an infrared broiler. This steak doesn't take long. It's pretty quick. In just five to six minutes, you'll get a juicy medium rare. So you see that fat starting to caramelize, okay? If you let it rest, then the meat's gonna kind of reabsorb all those juices. And when you slice it, there's gonna be nothing left really on the board. That's when a steak is perfectly rested. That's when you know that you've cooked it right. 
One of the most legendary steakhouses in New York City, Peter Luger, has been sourcing meat cuts from La Frida since 1998. Peter Luger has garnered its reputation as a New York City institution, frankly due to a lot of hard work. And I think it starts with our attention to detail in selecting each piece of meat that comes into this restaurant. We're really about letting the highest quality steak we can buy shine with just a little salt and a tiny bit of butter. We cook the steak to order and we send it out sizzling hot to the guy. That's it. But La Frida doesn't just supply fancy restaurants. Back in 2004, Pat bought the company's first burger machine to make patties for a new fast casual chain that was about to open, Shake Shack. Pat created a special blend without trimmings or added fat for the new chain. Shake Shack still uses Pat's recipes today, and La Frida still supplies patties for more than 100 of its locations. Every burger starts on the main floor. 2,000 pounds of Angus beef are dumped onto conveyor belts. Machines spray them with diluted vinegar that kills potential germs. Other machines grind and mix the meat. The ground meat goes into patty forming machines which can make 200 different blends. Workers need to move fast. The company pumps out over 200,000 burgers a day. It gets pretty uh, hectic and frustrating sometimes when it gets overloaded, but um, every single day is just a different challenge. Mel's Butcher Box in Tenafly, New Jersey, is one of Pat's loyal customers. Owner Melanie Landano orders up to 100 pounds of burgers from him a day. For the restaurant, we use the original Pat LaFrida blend, which is a short rib brisket blend. For special events, if a customer requests dry aged brisket burgers, we get that. Some people request a 45 day dry aged burger. We, um, anything I want, Pat will make for us. Once we put it on the grill, we leave it on the grill. And a lot of people like to press on, press on the meat, then all the juices come out. I, what I do, I flip it once, I leave it and let it cook, and then I, hold, I let it rest here. On top of her daily customers, Mel also cooks burgers for four local schools. On Monday morning alone, she grills over 200 patties for students. So today we're probably going to cook uh, five or six cases in one hour. So it's Burger Palooza. Mel also buys Lafrida skirt steaks, ribeye cheese steaks, and meatballs. Here's our Lafrida meatballs. This is going with this penne meatball. We're just heating up. This is uh, his grandfather's recipe, and they're de delicious. I'm Italian, so I don't use any other any other meatball but Pat Lafrida meatball. If I have no time to make my own, so. <laughs> Family recipes are still an important part of Lafrida's. Pat's great-grandfather opened a Brooklyn butcher shop in 1922. After moving the operation to Manhattan's growing meatpacking district, Pat's grandfather took over and started Pat Lafrida Meat Purveyors. Pat started learning the job as a child. My favorite times were cutting meat with my grandfather to my left and my dad to my right. But Pat's father insisted his son try a different career first. He didn't want me to work those hours. Um, he didn't want me in that environment. Pat spent nine months working as a stockbroker, but then ditched that job to join the family business. A decade later, Pat would be named CEO. And now my dad can't wait for my son to go off to college and come back and run the family business. When Pat joined in 1994, the company had 44 restaurant customers. Now, they have 1,600 and are posting annual sales of $270 million. We are several hundred times larger than we were. In 2021, Pat opened this new $20 million facility. To keep such a massive operation running, Pat has to be more than a manager, though. He does everything. He comes, works in production, he works with us, he goes on the table, he goes to see customers, he oversees everything. It's something I love to do, and I do a lot of my best thinking while I'm cutting meat. It, um, to me, it's a, it's a relaxing time. Even after this much growth, 
Pat thinks there's room for more. This facility produces about 250,000 pounds of product a night and with the capacity to probably triple or quadruple that. So we built it with the space to, to be able to uh, expand from there.